Welcome to 12 Sided Stories Halloween Special, Ashwood. This tale of horror uses the gumshoe system's fear itself, and as always, is story heavy and rules light. Now, your ghoul master, Wes Otis. Welcome, everybody. This is our Halloween special. Before we jump into what game we are playing, and I'm going to go over the rules and everything else, I want to introduce the players and what characters they're going to be playing. I will start with Michelle. With me? Yes. I never get to start. Yay! Yay. Well, I am Michelle Otis, and I will be playing Susie Springer, and I'll explain a little more about her later on, but I'm really happy to be here. Hi, I am Pooja, and I will be playing Raina Martine, and I'm also really happy to be here for the first time. (laughs) It's really exciting. Yeah. Hi, I'm Abria Iyengar, and I am playing Ellie Coleman, and I'm going to narrow up my transatlantic accent to try to... Oh, God, it's going to be a nightmare. <laughs> I am very happy to be here, but I am already sweating, so stop. <laughs> I am already sweating, so. I'm Nick Levy, and I am playing William Olburn the f- fourth. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, had to check my numbers there. Um, super excited to be here, and uh, also sweating. <laughs> we are playing Fear Itself. It's the gumshoe system. What I love about it is it's tailored for investigation. You have two sets of skills. You have investigating skills and you have general skills. With the investigating skills, you don't have to make a roll. When you go into an area and you start looking for stuff, if you have the skill that's connected to that clue, you just automatically get it so that you'll never actually miss anything. So that's how the game keeps the flow going with investigation stuff. Most of your skills are one point because that's all you need for them. If it has more than one point, you can spend that point to get extra information. General skills, you have a pool of points. Let's say fleeing, which you're going to be using a lot. You look at it and go, you know, hey, I've got 16, 15. That's a, that's a big number. But the thing is, is that you have to make a decision when you have to flee. I have a difficulty number in my head. I'm not going to tell you what that difficulty number is most of the time because that adds stress. Yeah. And you've got to decide if, I'm going to, if you're going to spend money from that pool. Nice. So you say, I'm going to spend three points and I'm going to roll my die. And you add the die plus the amount of points that you spend. And then if that's past the difficulty number, then you succeed. I do a lot of succeeding with failures as well. Succeed, you know, if you fail, you'll still get something that moves the plot forward. Okay. But you'll also, something bad will happen. Okay. Okay. So that's how that works. As those points go down, though, you've got to you've got to think. Okay, do I want to spend on this or do I want to spend later? Because the only way to get points back, especially with a one shot, is you have to. You know, in video games where you enter the room that's got like the piano music, and you're like, "Oh, I can relax in here." <laughs> you got to find a safe haven <laughs> where you can spend at least an hour, and then you get three points back. Though it's okay. not a lot. That's not. Yeah. yeah. So you have to think strategically about how you're spending those points on your die roll. And sometimes you don't know. Now, I will tell you this. The average difficulty rating is a four. Most of the time, it's probably going to be that. But in some situations, it might be a little bit more. Or you might know that you really, really don't want to fail this particular thing. Okay? So that's really it. You guys are normal people from normal backgrounds. You are not heroes. There's not a lot of combat that goes on. I was wondering, because I was like, where's all my spell casting? Yeah, no, <laughs> no fireball in a 10 Drunky. by 10 foot room. Weird. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the background of where your characters are. All of you guys are going through an immense amount of grief and loss And you have found yourself, for one reason or another, at the Ashwood Medical Resort. Now, this is not like an asylum. There's nobody here with severe mental illness or anything like that. It's mainly for people with depression, grief, stress, anxiety. Mm -hmm. Altogether, there's like 50 patients And you guys are divided into groups depending on why you're there. So like the anger management group is together because they're working through their problems together as a group. You guys are in the grief and loss group. There's an anxiety group. They're in the corner, like afraid. (laughs) 
Um, uh, there's I'm feeling uh, a little anxious about being here. Stress. So like the problems are real, but they're not debilitating to the yeah. point where they need like like an actual real intervention. Yeah, real. Yeah. yeah. And this is a brand new facility. It's gorgeous. They've rebuilt everything. Now there was a hospital here before, so some of the uh, building looks a little bit older, but they basically rebuilt. I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> they basically redone everything. Ashwood Retreat is in Washington near the small town of Winosha in Ashwood Forest. It's 30 miles away from Winosha. It's it's a it's a trek. Okay. Now the grounds I'm are sorry, what state was it? Washington. Washington. Winosha, Washington. Winosha, Washington. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Trouble, How trouble, close trouble. is it to Walla Walla? Rob, eh, meh. Kind of far. <laughs> they felt there would be some trouble. Honestly, smart. Yeah. <laughs> Windosha is willy willy far from Walla Walla. <laughs> oh no, we're all Elmo Fudd now. So the, the grounds are beautiful and they have these paths that go throughout the forest nearby. So you can do this whole walking trail thing. But there's that certain point where the path goes off and you're like, okay, I can't go any further because it's just woods. It's just old uh, forest that has been there for thousands of years. There is this huge deck that looks out over the forest. The place is three stories high. And that's where you guys usually go for your group therapy sessions. People are usually here for up to the most two months, depending on what they're there for. So Ellie would be maybe there for a little bit longer because she's dealing with alcoholism and everything that goes in with that. I don't know if like it's dealing with it. It's just like, it's a thing I do. I'm a writer, so I don't know why we have to keep focusing on that part. I'm sad. Can we just deal with that? So you guys are on this huge balcony with all of the other people in your group. You guys are part of the green group. There's 10 people in your group. And right now, Tina and Jake Wells, twins who went through a horrible accident and lost their parents, are talking to the group. And they do the thing where they like will finish each other's sentences and seem to be very in tune with each other. And they're always together. Tina's talking about being trapped. And her father was a pilot and they were flying a little Cessna and they went down. And they hit the water. Her father couldn't get out of his chair and her mother was trying to help and something hit her mother in the head because there was a second piece of debris that came in. And she, she starts crying. She goes, I just, I don't know. I tried to help, but then Jake grabbed my arm and we went out the back of the plane and I thought my dad was going to swim out with mom. And I just watched the plane go deeper down and disappear. And I, I don't, I don't think there's anything else that I, I could have done. Your psychologist's name is Dr. Shannon Patel. And she is listening to all this and she goes, well, Sometimes when these big events happen, we question whether or not we could have done more. But the reality is, is that you have split seconds to make all of these decisions and you can't change that past or that reality. And you have to move forward and, you know, you have to, you have to be able to understand that it takes time and you did what you could do. And your father would be just glad that you're alive and that you're able to go forward with your life. She then looks at William. So tell us, William, you've, you've been with us for about a week. Is there anything you would like to talk about uh, with your experience? Well, uh, what happened with Jeremy was a regrettable accident, and uh, I, I certainly can't be held responsible. No one's judging you here. That's not the point. We're we're more after what you're feeling inside. Uh, I feel awful, of course. I'm I'm racked with guilt. Racked, I, I tell you. It, it's <sighs> if only those stupid idiots had had been paying more attention to the props. I I couldn't just. 
when, when you grab a gun on stage, you should be assured that that is filled with blanks and not with live ammunition and, and, and just, and, and it went right into the musical number and he just was dead there on stage for 10 minutes and nobody even knew there was, William, I can't, calm I cannot. down. You're so dramatic. Now, now this is his journey. He needs to be able to take it without being judged. How, how can any man feel knowing that I've taken a life that, that, that I have snuffed the vital spark that has been given to this individual and, and eliminated, uh, consigned it to oblivion. It tears at a man. I tell you, it, it just rips inside of you. It's awful. You know, we're no kind, we're not a voting academy, right? You don't have to play to the cheap seats. No, no. I understand. I beg your pardon. Maybe if I was this allowed to. This is how ha- I feel. Can't you understand? Ugh. The beating heart, the passion that I have to endure, the agony that tears at me every day. It must be so hard knowing that if you had simply checked the weapon before you. Fired it. That That's not my job. So That's what close. everyone, 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 everyone. <laughs> we're we're getting off base here. We're uh, we're we're not here to to cast aspersions or or cause each other pain. We're here to help each other out. It is completely understandable to be racked with guilt over something that you didn't know was going to happen. I mean, we all. We all do things in moments that we think we could have changed, but it's, it's just not how those things work. I mean, well, there's a difference between just experiencing the guilt and accepting the responsibility for the actions. Right. That's true. I have no one to blame but myself for my husband's passing, but that's a burden that I carry and I can't blame others. I don't blame him for sneaking into the house at the wee hours of the morning. I mean, who (laughs) climbs up a balcony anyway? He had keys. What a choice. Yeah, can we talk about that a little more? That's not on you. That's not on you. Those are decisions that he made, and then I have the decisions that I made. While it's awful, and that guilt is just tears at me i i understand the depth of guilt but i i can't conscience a lack of responsibility is that directed at me i don't think so i think she's just saying generally and if it just happens to hit your ears a certain way well do with it what you will can we Please get a reversal on the no cigarette situation here. I if if I listen to those creepy shining twins talk about the plane crash one more time without some nicotine, I will self terminate. Uh, uh, I just I, wish we could have a reversal on the wine thing. I'm just so used to having a glass of wine. I had a glass of wine with my best friend. Oh, oh, and we're crying now. Great, great, great. Okay, well. Everyone, I, I feel that... You're doing a great job, Dr. Patel. I, I really, feel like top we, notch. I feel like we may need to do individual conversations <laughs> about all of this. I, we're missing the point of the, the whole group experience. It's not about lashing out at other people or, or feeling you need to put someone in their place. I think on this note, I, we're going to wrap it up here. And, uh, you know, it's, it's almost lunchtime. Go ahead and, and uh, we'll talk with you guys uh soon okay and uh yeah um thank you for coming to your first group meeting i'll talk (laughs) with you tomorrow and we'll see if we can maybe realign a little better and and get into the spirit more of working together as a as a team and not as horrible like backstabbing thing we don't want to do that no judgment you are backstabbing no backstabbing only front stabbing the only front stabbing, yes. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, go enjoy your lunch, and we'll we'll all talk very soon. And thank you, doctor. Thank you. No problem. Your projection. Your. It all came. All the pain, the guilt came from the diaphragm. I was genuinely impressed. Thank you. <laughs> I am Juilliard trained. Uh, and it shows. <laughs> and that's how I got into Juilliard. <laughs> <laughs>
Exactly. That's what I thought about with this character. <laughs> oh, good. That was totally gentleman. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Did you study in New York? Albany. <laughs> okay, so you guys leave, and is there anything before we jump ahead to dinner that anyone wants to do? Uh, I think Ellie definitely would in her like unsupervised free time like take a notebook out to like not quite like the the woods because i don't know how right. far the property like extends yeah but she there finds clearly, like a like, yeah yeah like one of those obnoxiously like oh this is where writers write yeah. like spaces yeah. under a tree with some light fog coming in yeah and sits there and like opens her notebook and starts to write and like trails off and then like throws the notebook away and walks back Okay, so when you throw the notebook away, you hear the sound of glass. She was, like, turning around the storm back and then turns back. And it's going to go, like, try to wander in a little farther to see what she hit. Yeah, you see your notebook on top of, like, grass and stuff like that. And like I said, this area is all, like, pretty well taken care of. Mm. And there is a bottle of whiskey that is sealed... Just sitting there right next to the tree. Oh, lovely. Uh, I am not going to question that even a little bit. And okay. she's going to like <laughs> grab the notebook back and tuck the whiskey like into her, I don't know, like oversized, like fluffy camel coat. Okay. And head on back in. All right, cool. Score. This is right. better than writing, I think. Yeah, this <laughs> all works. So um, anybody else? I'm probably going to just go for a walk on a different path. I see the one that she's going on. Yeah. And I mean, it's like just tons of them. Yeah. So, so I go on a different one. Okay. I am going to go for, uh, just going to skip lunch and go for a run. Okay. So yeah, you're one of those pretty people who's like, no, I don't need, I'll just go for a run and screw lunch. <laughs> yeah. Okay. God, I wish I was that person. <laughs> All right, and after lunch, William is going to uh, go up to the, the overhanging deck okay. and kind of pace back and forth and run lines. Probably something overly dramatic, right? Like he's he's at perfectly blue sky right now, and he's raging. Blow wind and crack your cheeks. <laughs> right, right, like, right. <laughs> but it doesn't. Yeah, just uh, you know, pacing back and forth, running lines. So, you guys all do your thing. Ellie, you make it back inside with the bottle. You notice one of the security guards sitting there kind of looking at you almost knowingly, like, hey, how's it going? You, you know, anything interesting out there? But he doesn't say anything to you. It's just all in the weird ways. Like, it's, yeah. kind of, it's a little off. Have a good walk. Yeah, that kind uh, of thing. Yes. Um,. Yikes. His name's uh, Jacko. Jacko. Yeah, the security guard. Of and it uh, is. he just kind of he kind of wa- watches you walk across, mm-hmm. right? So you get the sinking feeling that maybe he knows where you like to go and write. Oh. And that he might have left it there. You're okay. not sure though. Weird. Okay. So do you drink this before you go to dinner and of take your pills? I do. Excellent. And how much do you drink like uh like a couple fingers to let the just a, I hate this food. Okay. I hate it. Okay. So you you drink you drink, you know, a few fingers mm-hmm. and uh um, Out of a bottle, which is wild. Yeah. <laughs> you're uh you're feeling pretty good. Yep. And you guys get to dinner and they give you your pills and then there's a a new yellow pill that's there and they go okay the yellow pill is for helping with insomnia for people that are are having a hard time sleeping Mm. it's your choice whether or not you want to take it or not but the doctor recommended it down the hatch all right oh why not really i'm just gonna do this thing (laughs) do i can i decide later can i take it with me I need to do this now. I hate the swallowing in front of you. I feel like it's this really sexual thing, and I just I don't enjoy this interaction. Can I just take it with me? Uh, the nurse looks very like okay. I, gu- I guess that's fine. She snatches the pills and walks away. <laughs> Jeff is all like, well, I'm just not interested in you anyway. And I walks don't away. believe that. <laughs> <laughs> you guys eat your dinner, and man. About 45 minutes in, that pill just, like, hits you. You are, <laughs> I'll take 
you're not taking I'm it? I'm actually okay. not taking any of my pills. Oh, okay. Nice. Okay. Squirrel cheeks them. <laughs> and okay. Then I'll them out later. <laughs> so I feel like that is a roll. Okay. I feel like do that's. It. Let's do Filch, because. You know, it's kind of I the same thing. don't actually have filch. Well, that means that you have to make the roll and you don't get any bonuses to it. I just it. believe in you. Just be amazing. Just filch it. Filch it. Filch, filch it. Filch it. Oh. I did not filch it at all. I, I severely failed my filch. What, what do you have to roll to for it to be a success? The standard is for... But if it's something that's like really big that I think needs a little bit more... It would have been nice had I rolled out of blood. Yeah. Yikes, that die. This die is in jail. Please put it on waivers. <laughs> you try to, like, squirrel these pills, and Nurse Jeff goes, uh, you really need to sw- swallow those pills. I'm, I'm sorry. But it's important for your recovery to be able to have the right medication. And plus, it's dangerous to go off of these. I don't believe in polluting the temple that is my body. Well, I mean... I can't force you to take pills, obviously, um, because this is well, not that kind of lovely, place. Well, that's lovely, and I just spit them out on his feet. Oh, you hate to see that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I'll let the doctor know that you no longer want to take the pills. Um, now, here's a question. Have you ever taken the pills, or have you always squirreled them away? I have always squirreled them away. Okay. Nice. So... All right, that's good to know. That interaction goes oddly. And <laughs> Susie, Susie, I was about to say Stacy. That's why I stopped myself. Uh, Susie, William and Susie. Though. William and Susie. Okay, so you guys have taken your pills. I'm going to hold on to mine to be a bad person with later. Like, if okay. I can't fall asleep, we're going to do whiskey and crushed sleeping pill. Right. Are you, wow. what about the <laughs> antidepressants? Have you been taking those? Oh, yeah, those? I've been taking those because, okay. you know, it's. Not great in my brain meat right now. Right. But now that I'm a little sauce, I want to try to get some writing in. So Absolutely. Hey, Sleepy Susie, uh, before you nod off, there's something I would love to show you in my room. <laughs> sure. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> She's just sort of oblivious. <laughs> All right. I love that girl's muffins. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very here for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you guys retire to your room, yeah. Ellie. You go inside and there's the bottle. You I'm going to offer you yeah. some whiskey. <gasps> it's oh. not wine, but it starts with the same letter. So, oh, you know. Thank you so much. Oh, my God. I can't believe I checked into this place. It's just... <sighs> I thought it would be a retreat Mm -hmm. and I'm just not feeling centered right now. (laughs) It's just, it's just not, it's not speaking to me. I I hear you. I respect it. Uh, Why don't you go ahead and take a sip of that and please don't cry, but you can stay in here as long as you would like. Thank you so much. So I take a swig. All right, cool. So you guys get pretty sauced and kind of, lose track of time and fall asleep at some point <laughs> yeah. right Susie you're really knocked out did you take the yellow pill or not um Ellie man. I'm gonna let it die decide oh, cool a three I don't know uh <laughs> let's say yeah towards the end of the night towards the end of yeah. the night so you guys take these pills while you're drinking and you are yeah. out oh dope <laughs> yeah I crunched I crunched it up too just like I wonder how long it's <laughs> <laughs> William, are you just going to go straight to bed? Yeah, I don't think that there's anything okay, else cool. for him to do here. So, Reina, you were the only one that did not take the pill. You go into your room. Is there anything specific you want to do before going to sleep? Reina does another workout routine. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, as part of her nightly thing. thing. And... Uh, and then, you know, takes a shower and, and okay. gets ready for bed. All right. So you're you're in bed and you've fallen asleep. You, you've been there for a couple of hours. It's like maybe one o'clock in the morning. And, and suddenly you just wake up and you see the silhouette of a figure in the very corner of the room. You can't see any detail. Just standing there. Jacko, I'm not taking the pills. Get out. 
The figure does not move or respond to what you say. Caden, move on. Does not respond, does not move, just stands there. You can feel eyes that you can't see boring into you from across the room. Take a glass, like a water glass from my right from uh, side nightstand, table, yeah. my nightstand, and throw it at the figure. So you throw it, and you <clears> hear it, it. You hear it hit the wall and crash, and the figure just stands there. And it's pretty dark. The only light that's coming through is there's a small, because they dim the lights in the hallway. So there's a small little light coming through the door from underneath. Your eyes have adjusted so you can kind of see this outline. Like I said, there's no features. Kaden, you know I didn't actually mean to, right? You know... You know I didn't know. How would I have ever guessed it was you? Why are you doing this to me? Silence and staring. Stop. Stop. Now, this is a good point for a stability roll. Nice. It is your choice on how many stability points you want to use. The one thing that is pretty solid is stabilities are four. You have to beat a four unless it's something really, really big. Um, but most of the time it's just four. So I will give you that. So do you want to spend any and roll your die or do you want to just try to roll it without? I'm going to, I'm just going to roll the dice here. Without spending any points. Okay. Let's, let's see what this die. Yeah. That's a three, so I, I definitely made the wrong choice. Yes. Yes, that's okay. <laughs> so you lose two stability points from your total. Ouch. You start feeling this, like, panic come up. Now, players can decide to panic, and panic actually will reduce the amount of stability you lose, but you also can either fight or run. Those are your two choices. That's it. So that's your choice. If you want to get one of those points back, you can panic and then you basically, I narrate what's going to happen or you can take it and you make the decision on how you're going to react to this shock. I'm going to run. I'm running. You're getting running, out of there? Like, okay. Fighting obviously didn't work. Right. The first two times. <laughs> okay. Because, um, you know. She was fighting when she shot Caden, and then she was fighting when she threw the glass, and that did nothing. Yeah. So she's just going to book it. So when you run to the door and you, you start to try to open it, for some reason it's been locked from the other side. And you look out of the corner of your eye, and that figure's no longer there. Going to hit the light switch. Okay. You flick on the light switch. It looks like someone's underneath the sheets on your bed, just like you were just lying. Run, bitch! Yeah. <laughs> and you're just like, hey, that door. Because it's like... So. I just had that, like, movie theater, like, no, girl, don't! <laughs> Get out the room! <laughs> what, what, level of the, what level of the place am I on? You're on the first level. There is a window, so if you want to climb... And I am a... exiting through the window. Okay, great. So you <laughs> Ground it, floor room for the wind. Yeah. So you jump out the window... And where do you go? Are there any lights on anywhere in the place? Like, Oh, yeah. There's lots of outdoor lights on. All of the hallways have lights on. They're just dimmed. And then the, the front door is accessible. Okay. Is there like a separate building? Either a garden building, like a... Or a yeah, or there's a, a, there's a grounds, there's like a grounds uh, building where they keep all, the, all of that kind of stuff to be able to keep the property going and everything. So. Okay. I'm going to book it for that. Okay. Since it's like... All the lights are on like the twilight level. So obviously, I don't think you had time to throw on your shoes. What do you wear when you sleep? Socks. <laughs> Socks? <laughs> yes. That's on my it? Feet. Oh, you mean like in general? Yeah, what, what, do, what I... do you have on? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I was like... <laughs> what, a, what an answer. Just socks. Oh, socks. Just socks. <laughs> I'm completely naked except for socks. That's, that's all I wear. Uh, it's a 1984 no, she's got movie. like a... Uh, like a... 
cami and pajama bottoms. Right. Uh, okay, cool. I feel like this definitely needs a fleeing kind of role. So you can, again, I won't tell you what the, the number is going to be, but if you want to spend some points. I think after after my last two rolls, it's right. necessary to spend some points. <laughs> okay. I'm going to spend two points. All right. So go ahead and give me a roll and... Nice. Of course, that time it of was course. not necessary to spend two points. All that right. gives Maybe me an eight. Was. All right, so you you book it out of the the window. You run around the the front where the most lights are, and you make it to the garden shed, right where where it's this, it's it's a pretty nice building, and you get there and it, it's got a padlock on the on the door, and you're just like I hate Fuck. this place. <laughs> so we're gonna get back to you. Okay, <laughs> so Ellie. At some point, you wake up to the sound of screaming from down the hall. And your stomach does this thing that you know is not good. Oh, God, no. The god of porcelain would like you to come and worship at his basin. (laughs) This is a waste of good whiskey. (laughs) Yep. And I dubstep on over to my bathroom. (laughs) And whoop, whoop, whoop. All of that. Very good. You know what? I blame the pill. This is why I don't mix often. <laughs> <laughs> so you get over there and you, you you throw up and you feel just horrible. But you keep hearing this screaming down the hall. Mm. And what would you like to do? Um, I think once I pay my tithe, I'm going to get up <laughs> and throw on like my satin robe and like go stomp angrily down the hall to yell at what I assume is one of the twins. Okay. So when you go to the door and you try to open it, it too is locked from the outside. You are you you fucking kidding me. I am not a prisoner in this institute. And she starts screaming. (laughs) And that's when Susie, when you suddenly wake up out of this really deep groggy like sleep uh, to yelling and beating on the door as Ellie seems to be having a meltdown trying to get out of the door. And you hear screaming from down the hall that's just this this faint, really high pitch uh, sound. Uh, Ellie, what's what's going on? This is bullshit! Let me out! Ah! Who's keeping you in? The door is locked. What? What? Wake up, you groggy bitch. They locked us in this room. Oh my god. Like, oh my god. Maybe, maybe if we kick it? I mean, I guess I didn't try that. I'm going to go ahead and try to kick the door. Okay. Do you have, uh, let's see, what do you Shoes got? on or the ability to kick good? <laughs> no. <laughs> do you yeah. have athletics? I have athletics. So why don't you give me, do you want to spend any points I'll on this? Spend one point. All right. So basically you'll be our main person because you have athletics. You don't need to roll. You're going to give her a plus one. Yeah. To get all together. Nice. Didn't need it. Got to see. Nice. Who knows? Maybe you needed it. Yeah. He didn't tell us the difficulty. That's true. This is true. So you break the door. You can now go out. Oh my God. You have that like muffin strength. I knew bringing all about the muffins. (laughs) I love you. I think let's go. Who is screaming? So we're going to go in the direction of the screaming. I okay. Guess. All right. So we'll get back to you guys. Because we're too groggy to really know better. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> we're just bother Ed. Like that. <laughs> so, William, you're on stage. You've just finished your big number after shooting the head of the police department in the head at the Italian restaurant. And you're going into your revenge song. What you guys don't know is that he was in a very off-Broadway show of Godfather the Musical. Yes. So, um, your dream... Was you're it ha- the original Godfather or was it the Godfather 3 the musical? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would have been just... So yeah. Just perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was you. Um, so, you have this dream almost every night and you've just gotten done shooting Jeremy in the head but not knowing that you've done so. And you do your song... then suddenly everything goes dark. Everybody is screaming because they realize that 
Mickey's dead and you're standing there by yourself on the stage, all of a sudden just surrounded by darkness and one light. You always feel at this point like you're going to give some speech that explains everything perfectly. And then you wake up just breathing really heavily. You wake up, you too hear this this faint sound of screaming coming from down the hall. And then suddenly you hear the sound of a door being broken. But there's something at the end of your bed sitting there. It's a gun. And there's a bullet sitting next to it. I pick up the gun. Okay. And open the uh, chamber. Okay. Is it currently loaded? Nope. It's just that one bullet. I pick up the bullet and stick it in the pocket of my pajama pants. Okay. But then I move the gun to the nightstand drawer. Okay. Out of sight. All right. What? And I, I pinch myself. Am I... This can't be... Who would have done such a thing? I can't... Think. Think, William. Who who knows? No one could know. It's not... It's not like I... It's not like I intended to... to I have to get rid of this. And I will... Uh, Go to the door. Okay. It is too locked from the outside. What? Who? Someone? Who? 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 Who's done this? Let I let me out. Yeah, you jiggle the door. No, no luck. Is the 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 windows open? The windows you can open. Okay. What does my window look out on? Your window is on the first floor, and it just looks out onto the back of the property. I have to get rid of this. Uh, I open the window. And look out up and down the wall to uh-huh. see if any other windows are open. Anyone else is looking. You don't see anybody else, but you do see a window that's open. Leaning out the other direction, mm-hmm. like I look back and then leaning out the other direction, I take the bullet and I fling it out into the brush. Okay. And then I open the drawer and grab the gun and go to do the same thing and stop for a moment and... and no, no. If there's anything that my career in the theater has taught me. And then I wipe down my prints and sort of holding it with like a the edge of the robe. I also chuck it just far away, away, okay. fr- away from the open window. All right, cool. And then what do you go back to bed? Do you go out? What do you do? Uh, I look around the outside to, again to see if anyone's seen me. Uh, no, it doesn't look like anyone's seen you. Like I said, there is one other open window, but that's it. The noise out there must have must have hidden any sort of commotion that I had. And I'll close the window. I can't. And I'll uh, just begin pacing okay. back and forth. And like every third pace of the room, pound on the door and uh, demand to be let out. Okay. All right. So... We will get back to you then. Reyna, you get out to the building where they keep all of the garden equipment and and whatnot, and the door is locked. Off in the distance, you hear this sound, almost like something moving in the brush, but it's pretty far away. Like in the forest side of things? Like like from where you came from. Oh, hell no. So what do you want to do? Uh, are there any large stones or anything around, like, in visible distance? I'm yeah. Like, we'll grab one and kind of try to smash the lock. The lock? lock. Okay. Or the portion of the door that is holding the lock in place. Okay, cool. You start hitting this lock. All of the paths have these round stones that kind of line the paths, right? They're the, and so you, it's easy enough to grab one of those. And you hit the lock a couple of times and a light goes on on the second floor of this building you didn't see because it's in the back but there's a little stairway up to the second part and the window opens and the janitor looks down and says can i help you are you yes please please can you come down there's something someone was in my room and and they had locked me in oh okay uh 
I'll, I'll come right down. And he, he, he walks down. His name's Tom. And he, he goes, so someone's following you? I don't know. Someone was in. Someone, some, someone was in my room, and I and, and I tried to get out the door, but it was locked from the outside. That sounds. Strange. And I had to go out the window, and then I just, I just, if we could go inside, if we could go inside, please. Yes, yes, of course you can, you can come up to my place, and and you guys go into his place and it's well maintained little apartment up there he gives you a blanket offers you a drink and says all right well i'm gonna go and talk with the security guard and will you be okay here i don't want to be low okay well um, I'll, I'll call then i'll call over there so he gets on this walkie talkie and starts trying to call over there and we'll get back to you ellie and Susie, you guys are in the hallway heading down towards this screaming Hmm. and you get to this long hallway and suddenly the screaming just ceases and a few moments later you hear all of the doors unlock at the same time and are these electronic locks yeah no they're not. Uh, That's did you hear that too? Weird. I don't feel great about this. I'm feeling a little freaked out. I'll be honest. Yeah. Same. Okay. Uh. Well, should we go find out who is screaming? Um. Yeah. I mean, the other alternative is to walk back into the room and hope we don't get locked in again. Clearly they installed some kind of new lock electronically on the doors. I guess so. I mean, we could go to my room. Okay, something, I mean, okay. It's it's not like that. It's not like that. Uh, Don't assume things. Also, (laughs) (laughs) I just, I don't know you well enough yet. So you're saying there's a chance. (laughs) All right. (laughs) And I want to walk down to whatever door we were like, that that screaming was officially coming out. I want to open the door up. Okay. Jake, calm down. (laughs) You open the door up and you flick the light on and there is this table in the center of the room and there's blood all over the floor. There's linens everywhere that are bloody, but there's nobody in there but all of this blood everywhere. So I need you guys to make a stability check yeah. for me. Yeah. Uh, it's up to you on how many points you want to spend. I'm going to spend two. Okay. I'm going to spend one. All right. Three. <laughs> really die? Three total. Yeet. Total. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> so you both have threes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I'm going to panic. Yeah, right. let's, let's panic. All right, cool. I start running down the hall towards the main entrance. Okay. So you guys run down towards the main entrance, and at the front desk is Anna, the night security guard. And she's like, what, what's going on? Why are you, why are you? What's... Oh, did you not hear all the screaming, Anna? No. What are you talking about? Were you asleep? Uh, no. We heard, we heard screaming down the hallway, and then we tried to open our door, and our door was locked. All the doors were locked, and then and then we broke our door, and then we ran down, and then we saw all this blood. And then... <laughs> There's blood everywhere, and now she's squeaking. Um, do your job. Where did you see this? In... Down the hall. Do we? Do uh? Did I know what whose room that was? I uh, you know it was Tina's room. Yeah. Okay. It's one of the. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Twins. wrong twin. Yeah. yeah, but honestly, I like my bet. <laughs> yeah. It felt like a Jake move. Yeah, it was Tina's room. There's blood everywhere. I'll go down there. Yeah, maybe go down there. Uh, okay, it's terrifying. You guys stay here, and she gets no, on. No, the- we'll go with you. Are you kidding, Anna? Get your shit together. <laughs> <laughs> go. <laughs> <laughs> so she. Uh, she gets on her walkie-talkie, and right then she gets a call from Tom, and they're having a conversation. She goes, "Well, I've I've got one of the patients here," and you you kind of hear this trailing off, and says that there was somebody that followed her, and she disappears down the hallway, and then a few moments later she comes back up and she goes, "I looked in all of the rooms and I didn't see. Can you take me to the room because there's no blood down there." Okay, obviously that's ridiculous, and 
Yeah, I'm going to like grab your hand and we're going to storm back down the hall. I can't okay. believe you're calling us liars. I'm not calling you a liar. It's just I can't find anything. It's ridiculous. You just have to like open your eyes yeah, and take see. Her down Finally her released from this accursed oh. room. Yes. <sighs> Good morning. So you were locked in too. Yes, the, the, the door has been locked for uh, some time. I, I have no idea. I, who's who's responsible for this? Are I'm, you responsible for yes. this? He says, Anna, at Anna. Anna goes, the door should not be locked at all. But they were. They were locked. Oh, well. Uh, you just got a... She... There was someone... There's a... In the janitor? Look, this is all very strange, and we will get to the bottom of it. Let's look. And you take her back to the room where you saw all the blood, yeah. and it is spotless. It's a, but it's spotless to the point as if no one had ever been in there. Okay. Um, no, that's impo- literally impossible. I. <sighs> Sorry, where's, are, are you? Where's Tina? Where's Tina? Tina? Who's, who's Tina? Are you actually? Tina and do you Jake, know Tina? The twins? The twins? Tina and Jake. Well, I know of the patient Jake. The Jake wasn't here with anyone. His no. sister. His twin sister, Tina. She On the cries so much about, oh, my father didn't swim after me. Are you kidding? No. no. I don't I don't understand. I need to speak to your manager right now. Well. Where's Jake? Uh, well, let's go check on him. Anna takes you down and to the room and she goes the door is unlocked and he goes I don't know if we should wake him I mean wake in the door (laughs) just open the door yeah okay Jake wake up Jake wakes up and he's like oh what's going on and he he grabs his crutches and gets up on them and he says did he always have crutches no oh okay (laughs) and he comes over and he goes what's what's going on why why are you guys here quit your malingering man that's the worst job I've ever seen what uh, um well Oh, what? You don't need those. Where is your yeah. sister? I don't have a sister. No, you have a sister named Tina. Tina. We all know about her. No. Where is she? You and I your don't. parents all went down in a plane crash. Well, my parents died in a plane crash, yes, but I and don't have... And you saved your sister. Your twin sister. Yeah. I don't have a sister. That's... It. And that's when you guys realize that he's actually missing one leg. Oh. <gasps> um. Can I get a... Stability check from everybody? Yeah. Except for you, because you're with the... Uh, I'm separate, safe uh, you, with the janitor. You're safe with the janitor. <laughs> Let's go another two. Okay. I'm only spending one. Six. All right, cool. Uh, I'm going to spend one as well. All right. <laughs> oh. Welcome to the curse. Yeah, First roll is the worst. Yeah. So you take I off the five. one point, and you take uh, uh, two points of uh, stability grab him to show that this is fake, like he's got the leg up behind him. Okay. I feel as a story, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Believe. Let's do Go that. So that's... how do you grab him? Um, I said s- stop this ridiculous play acting. We all know you have two legs, and I knock one of the canes aside. And out he of his, goes out down of like arm. a red wolf. Oh, please. Please, this is first year bullshit. William. And I, I reach over and, and like, look, it's it's a sta- it's stagecraft. And so you grab his leg? Yes. So when you grab his leg, you realize that it's moist. Yeah. That it's still it. wet from blood. <gasps> What? It, it's, and, it's my yeah, hand it's your one. hand is all bl- red. And he goes, what, what? Why am I bleeding? I've. Uh, and he, he's That's like, my question. Why are you bleeding? And he passes out. Oh, God. Can I try to help him? Yeah. It, who has medic? I have medic. Okay, go for it. So just uh, roll, and then how many points are you going to spend on the roll? Um, I'll spend one point on the roll. Okay, cool. So go ahead and give it a roll. I'm sure I won't need that at all later. It's fine. It's fine. Seven. Yay. So you're able to stop the bleeding, but when you're doing it, you realize some clues. It looks fresh. Like it just happened recently and it doesn't make any sense that he's able to even like walk around. Yeah. It, the, it's been completely, so it looks professional. Like it's been sewn up really nice, but it definitely has been done recently. This wound is too fresh for him to be at a medical resort. This is yeah unfathomable. And it's the top of it's above his kneecap. It's like almost his entire leg is gone. That table we saw. 
Oh, God. What table? Oh, God, in the other room. All of that blood. When we saw, we went to Tina's room, and there was all this blood everywhere, and there was an operating table. And and when we went back, it was all gone. Anna goes, everybody, I need to call the police right now. We'll we'll get this figured who, out. Who was, in, who was in the other uh, building with the janitor? Uh, some patient. I haven't had a chance to go over there well, yet. Well, go get them. They right. shouldn't be out on their own. Are you kidding me? Okay, no, you're right. Let me call the police real quick so they can start heading out Is here. it morning now? It's pretty late, but no, it's not morning okay. yet. Reyna, you're with Tom, and he calls this in, and you guys are kind of waiting for a call back, and... Anna calls him back and says, you know, why don't you guys come over? We have an incident. We should all be together. Are you okay with that? What kind of incident? I don't know. She wouldn't tell me. She just said there was some kind of problem and that some of the other patients were now awake. And so we're keeping everybody in the lobby. Why we call the police? But we'll, we'll all be there together. We'll yes. Be together. Yeah, we'll be together. You won't leave me alone. Well, no, no. I mean, we'll, we'll, of we'll course walk not. over together. Yeah, we'll we're going to go together. together. Yes. You wouldn't happen to have a pair of... Um, Sandals that I could borrow. Yes, yeah, I, I do. So good. good, thank you. You're such a sweet, sweet guy. To All right. Well, we should go over there. So as you guys are heading across the way, once again you look over, and by one of the trees by the edge of the woods is this dark figure with no features, just watching you walk across. They're like maybe fifty yards away. Okay. Okay. Um, Are you all right? We're almost there. There's nobody out here. It's okay. Are you sure? You're absolutely 100% sure you don't see anything. He looks around, looks right at the spot where this six foot tall silhouette thing is standing. No, I, I don't see anything. Is, do you see something? Did of you? Of course. Of course not. I'm just making sure. Obviously, there is something going on. We're almost there. So you enter into the lobby, and there is William, and Susie's there, Ellie is there, and so is Jake, who has a missing leg all of a sudden, and crutches. Jake! Raina, darling, are you okay? What happened to his leg? Did the person who invaded my room do this? Someone, Someone invaded, invaded your, your room? room? <laughs> there was a, there was a dark figure in my room when I woke up, and I thought it was Jacko. Oh, it sounds like something Jacko would do. But the door was locked. Okay, Anna, that's four. Of I us. believe you that the door was locked. And so I, I escaped through the window because I didn't want to get assaulted in my bedroom at night. Respect. And and I went and I found Tom and Tom helped me. Lovely man. Thank you, Tom. Hi. Hi. Oh, you seem competent. What a lovely change. <laughs> hey, how many do you remember Jake arriving by himself? Everyone knows Jake and Tina were yes, inseparable. Yes. See? Thank you. Thank you. I, 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 don't, I don't even understand. What, I mean, you, what did the pill do to you that you would even ask me that question? I, okay. I don't... That's a lot of attitude. I, I don't like it. know. I don't have a record of a Tina here. And Jake goes, I don't have a sister. I don't know what you're talking about. Can I use bullshit detector to see what's going on? You automatically get the information. You don't Sweet. roll. They are completely and totally... 100% sure of what they are yeah. saying. Okay. They believe that there is no Tina. Ellie gets really close to Jake's face because she was just like patching him up and like looks him like dead in his eye, realizes he's telling the truth, and then turns to the rest of the group. We all remember you had a twin and a second leg. There's no way that and we all hallucinate your, I mean, the same thing. I mean, your pants are covered in blood. Well, that's kind of William's fault. I don't know what happened. I've, I've, I haven't had a leg since the crash, so I, I don't know why it suddenly. It wouldn't be bleeding. But that's it would the have thing. Healed. You, you had two legs yesterday. I don't remember that. I you remember had not two having legs, legs two hours ago. Yeah. Well, suddenly, around the corner comes Doctor Shepard. I got a call from the police. What's they're heading out here, and you fill him in on what's going on. And he goes, 
looks at all of you and says, did you all take your medication as prescribed the last night? Absolutely. You yes. did? Of course. Of course. Did you take your... I'm not defiling the temple that is my body. Oh, okay. <sighs> well, okay. However, if you are going to assume that I'm... we are having some kind of mass shared hallucination... I'm not assuming anything. I'm just checking to see what the realities are. Do you all mind if we all just stay in one room together? Oh, I mind so much. I mind the most I could mind. Perhaps uh, if we uh, retire to the lounge and uh, maybe just discuss some things before we decide to go to bed. Wink, wink, wink. That sounds like a good idea. Okay, well, we'll talk about this more and everybody kind of goes their their ways and you guys make it to the lounge. You guys sit down on these big couches. Reina, you're sitting and you're looking out the window and out on the edge of the forest is this tall silhouette just standing there. And that's where we're going to stop it. No. Dun, 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 dun. So that was part one of our Halloween special, Ashwood. Um, so you were having so a <laughs> fun. Did I win? Um, did, yeah, not yet. <laughs> okay. So I had a lot of fun. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. And we're going to go around and do, first, before we do social media, if you like our show, if you like what we do, there's one of three things that you could do. You could join our Patreon. You yes. could shout about us on social media, or you can leave a rating on any of the platforms. That would be awesome. Or all three. Or all three. Woo-hoo. Um, so Michelle, where can people find you? People can find me on the socials um, at Mishulu, M-I-C-H-U-L-H-U. That's on Twitter and Instagram. You can also hear my music on Plate Mail Games. Okay, so it was really fun playing with y'all today. Yay! Yay. Same! And I'm Pooja, and you can find me on Twitter at L-A-Daisy Girl. That's L-A-D-E-S-I Girl. (laughs) And Instagram (laughs) at Forgotten Saves. And uh, regularly on the Happy Jacks RPG podcast. Nice. Uh, I'm Abria Iyengar. You can catch me on socials at Quiddy, Q U I D D I E. And uh, I stream on Saving Throw Show, Happy Jacks RPG, and Hyper RPG a lot. So. Yeah, you're all over <laughs> Quiddy is everywhere. Quiddy oh, is God. Everything. <laughs> I am uh, Nick Levy, and you can find me on the socials, usually at SunGrowler. I believe that is both my Instagram and not that I'm ever on Instagram, but (laughs) in case you happen to get the five minutes per year I spend on Instagram, (laughs) uh, go ahead and maybe I will uh, get back to you. However, uh, I am more often on uh, Twitter, also at at SunGrowler, and you can see me uh, periodically on Happy Jack's RPG podcast. And uh, very once in a while, or if you want to hop in the Wayback Machine, on Saving Throw Show. <laughs> nice. My name is Wes Otis. You can find me at Plate Mail Games. Uh, if you like any of the sound effects or any of the things you hear on here, you can go to Drive Through RPG and pick them up, or you can go to Battle Bards as well. And uh, thank you guys so much. It was a lot of fun. Thank we will, you. We will pick up the story in part two. I don't want to wait. Fantastic. <laughs> I want to do it now. <laughs> to be your See you guys. Uh, <laughs> talk at you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.